Uh, before I move on to the traders, you know, Tesla uh, stock, of course, we talk a lot about it was higher today. But Elon, a, a very vocal Trump supporter, if Trump does not end up in the White House again, is that going to be trouble for for Tesla at all down the road if Harris takes over the presidency? I don't think so. Our thesis, uh, 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 short term, anything can happen and, and volatility around uh, this important day. Uh, we wouldn't be surprised. But uh, if we're right and autonomous, so robo taxis, the robo taxi, autonomous taxi network opportunity uh, is as big as we think it is, uh, any setback would be a great buying opportunity. ARK analysts, led by Tasha Keeney, put out a report detailing their latest bullish prediction for Elon Musk's EV giant on Wednesday. It argues Tesla shares will skyrocket roughly 1350% to $2,600 by 2029. Uh, moving into broadening out and, uh, and uh, the valuation of our portfolios, uh, we're feeling really good. Yeah. Hey, Kathy. So um, Tesla is the largest position in the ARK Innovation Fund. And it looks like uh, from some of the headlines, you've been selling um, a little bit over the last week or so. And you just mentioned, you know, robotaxi and autonomy and the opportunity there. You know, I look at Tesla it's down 40 some percent from its all time highs. You just mentioned the concentration in mega cap. It's the only mega cap stock that's basically tech stock that's not near its all time highs. Why do you think other investors are not appreciating what you see as far as the opportunity for robotaxi and autonomy? Well, then ARK's analysts are far less bullish. Uh, they say Tesla could launch a human-driven ride-sharing business to compete with the likes of Uber, but that wouldn't boost share prices in the same way robo-taxis could. Sure. Um, well, I think uh, in terms of the way it's analysed, we still, if you look at the uh, analyst coverage, it's, uh, it's mostly auto analysts still, a few more tech-oriented. This is not an auto stock. Now, it's certainly not a traditional one. Uh, it's a, a robotic stock. So autonomous vehicles are, are robots. They, they'll be electric and uh, they're powered by AI. Those are three different kinds of analysts. We have three analysts working on this and we've defined the market differently from, I think, a, a lot of other analysts. And we've done a lot of original research. Uh, uh, I, we put our model out there. Uh, you can you can uh, play with it and move around the variables to if you disagree with some of our assumptions. Uh, but if we're right, this is uh, this story has just begun. While unlikely, if we were to eliminate the possibility of a robo taxi network from our model, our price target would be tilde three hundred and fifty dollars. Keeney and her team admitted Wednesday. You know, Kathy, we have to ask, there have been a substantial amount of outflows by our calculations, about $2.8 billion from the ARK Investment Fund. Obviously, we talked about your performance in the beginning. While you certainly have had periods of time where you've had banner returns right now, and, and lately it hasn't really been part of them. So why should investors sort of feel confident in everything that you're saying now in your strategy? Why should they put their money to work with you and in this fund? Well, first of all, in terms of talking about this year, um, yes, as you say, we're down this year. Uh, last year, we were up 68%, and we ended at, at that point. So we do have some endpoint sensitivity going on here. Uh, the second thing is, uh, as, as I think Karen mentioned, uh, many people have associated... Uh... In the interview with Yahoo Finance, Wood explains why she is bullish on Tesla's robo-taxi. This is not if, it is when for Tesla. And for Tesla, it's also how quickly will they roll out. Our portfolio with low interest rates, uh, certainly algorithmic trading seem to do that. Um, I think that's going to change. Uh, and if you look at our portfolio, um, it has been, if you take out the boom and the bust around COVID, uh, it, it has basically been flat uh, for six years. Uh, and Yet, over this time, and, and today was a beautiful day for this, over this time, the progress that our companies have made is astonishing. In 2018, for example, Wood shocked Wall Street by predicting Tesla shares would surge 1,200% to $4,000, but Tesla ultimately made it through that dark time, and Wood's seemingly wild prediction came true. 
with Tesla shares hitting the split-adjusted $4,000 equivalent in January 2021. Really good years. I think 87% up in, in 17 as interest rates started up, and then we were up in a down year. Uh, in 2018. So this correlation to interest rates has been a phenomenon associated with this time. And I think the reason was the shock going from, you know, basically 25 basis points to 5.5% uh, uh, was a real shock to the system and, uh, and certainly reverberated. Do we need lower interest rates? Uh, I think interest rates not continuing to go up unless we're in a very strong... Wood thinks analysts will have to upwardly revise their estimates for what a robo-taxi means for Tesla's bottom line, stating that she sees it as a software-as-a-service model with 80% gross margins plus on that side of the model as opposed to 15-30% to margins on the EV side, and robo-taxis are key to the optimistic thesis. ARK estimates that nearly 90% of Tesla's enterprise value and earnings will be attributed to the robo-taxi business in 2029. Keeney and her team wrote, Of course, Tesla hasn't launched a robo-taxi business just yet, but ARK says it's all but guaranteed to roll out soon. We believe that Tesla will launch a robo-taxi service within the next two years, and that the probability Tesla fails to launch a robo-taxi service within five years is de minimis. Keeney and her team explained, noting that Tesla has said it will unveil its robo-taxi app and prototype at an all-eight event. But what if Tesla doesn't expand its robo-taxi network in time uh, because of difficulties gaining regulatory approval or for any number of other reasons? That means Tesla shares could surge 13 50% over the next five years, or a far less staggering 95%. And it all depends on the success of the robo-taxi business at least according to ARK Invest and CEO Wood. However, the ARK Invest team doesn't include this scenario in their bear case outlook, which still foresees Tesla shares rising to $2,000 by 2029. ARK's bullish outlook also features some serious vehicle production increases at Tesla. Keeney and her team expect the EV giant to raise production by 45% each year through 2029. In the first quarter, Tesla's vehicle production fell 1.7% from a year ago to 4.57, sorry, fleet 3000, as EV demand slowed. But ARK says the rollout of a robo-taxi business will lead to significant sales growth as robo-taxi business begin to buy Tesla's new EVs. Robo-taxis likely ease manufacturing scaling by simplifying vehicle designs as well as generating additional capital from highly cash flow generative rides, they added. While ARK's latest forecast for Tesla's shares may seem overly optimistic, Wood and her team have a track record of making prescient, out-of-consensus calls. And Elon Musk noted in a conference call that Apple's Tim Cook had even approached him about buying the company. Now Wood is predicting another run of good form at Tesla, and she noted the outlook doesn't even include any revenue from the potential release of Tesla's Optimus personal robot, which could be substantial. Our research suggests that generalizable humanoid robots represent a tilde $24 trillion global revenue opportunity at scale, tilde 50% in manufacturing. Should it decide to sell Optimus externally, Tesla could capture a significant share of this multi-trillion dollar market, ARK's analysts argued. Tesla CEO Elon Musk also responded to ARK's forecast on X Wednesday, calling it extremely challenging but achievable. How quickly will, will they go national or even global with their aspirations? As you know, Elon thinks in a very big way, and he has positioned Tesla to win the lion's share of this market. And this AI project is a winner-take-most project, the company that gets people from point A to point B the fastest, the safest, with as little wait time as possible, is going to win the lion's share of the market. The stock is a top holding in the ARK Innovation ETF, ARK, which is down about 11% so far in 2024. ARK Invest CEO and CIO Kathy Wood says of the upcoming event, Tesla is giving us great comfort, believe it or not, 
because we've done the research. I don't think a lot of analysts have done the kind of research on autonomous mobility that we have. We have a longer investment time horizon. That's why we've done the research. Comparing the heroics NVIDIA must achieve to prove a good investment and the feats Wood expects from Tesla makes her forecast look like the bigger fantasy. In the NVIDIA piece, I stated that to deliver its shareholders a relatively modest 10% annual return over the next seven years, um, NVIDIA would most likely need to double its market cap to $6.2 trillion by 2031. I'll spare you the details, but I estimated that getting there would require, by the end of that time frame, $200 billion in annual net earnings and $580 billion in revenues for respective annual increases of 25% and 50%. Conclusion? The chances of dwarfing the numbers now posted by the likes of Apple, Microsoft and Alphabet are remote, to put it mildly. Put simply, Investors have hiked the bar for what the AI pioneer must achieve so high that it's most likely to prove a great company and a poor investment. The ARC report predicts that Tesla will achieve an enterprise value of $8.2 trillion in five years. Although enterprise value includes debt as well as equity, ARC appears to attribute almost all of that number to the latter. Hence, it's saying that Tesla's market cap will jump one-third higher than the required, but fantastical, $6.2 billion bogey for NVIDIA in my roadmap for success, and do it far faster in five years instead of seven. Tesla starts the contest sandbagged by a heavy handicap. It's earned just $13.7 billion the last four quarters, one-third the $42.6 billion booked by NVIDIA. The ARC analysis puts Tesla profits by 2031 in the $300 billion range. Getting there would require annual gains of 90% through 2029. That's almost four times the hurdle for NVIDIA. ARC foresees $1.2 trillion in revenues for Tesla at the end of the five-year window. Ringing the bell would take annual increases of 65%, a growth rate far faster than the 50% needed to make NVIDIA a decent buy at these prices. Based purely on the scale of the numbers measured against what other tech greats have garnered and the size of Tesla's industry, the ARC estimates look far more outrageous than the over-the-top numbers baked into NVIDIA's valuation. That $300 billion in 2029 profits would be three times what Apple earns today, and the $1.2 trillion in revenues would tower at five times Microsoft's. Tesla's 2029 sales would equal the combined total for the world's five largest automakers, uh, Volkswagen, Toyota, GM, Ford, and BMW. Um, at an $8.2 trillion market cap, Tesla would be worth fourfold the all-in valuation of the global auto industry. The goals investors have set for NVIDIA and Wood's stupendous outlook for Tesla turn on the vision that a single player will dominate a revolutionary industry, facing little competition virtually in perpetuity. For AI colossus NVIDIA, that domain's already exploding. What's in doubt is the prospect of dominance forever. For Tesla, the business Robotaxis running on its super lucrative software doesn't exist yet, and whether and when it arrives, how profitable it will be, and whether King Elon can rule it alone are all big questions. If you've got two marvels at wood for making a call that looks ridiculous based on anything we've ever witnessed in the financial markets, and Musk for praising the analysis behind the gravity defying target. They might be true believers but investors should do the math. Earlier this week, uh, President-elect Donald Trump appointed Musk to head what he called the Department of Government Efficiency, DOGE, which is meant to be a cost-cutting initiative across the entire federal government. Um, the acronym DOGE also refers to the cryptocurrency Dogecoin, uh, which Musk has promoted. The prospect of creating a commission to evaluate federal spending is a Musk hobby horse. Musk first publicly pitched himself as the man to lead the initiative 
during a live X-Spaces conversation with Trump in August. It would be great to just have a government efficiency commission that ensures the taxpayers' hard-earned money is spent in a good way, Musk said at the time. I'd be happy to help out on such a commission. Wood believes Musk has a unique understanding of the current technological landscape. The way we're looking at this is Elon understands we are at the threshold of a convergence among many technologies, Wood said. AI being at the centre of it, and proprietary data is winning. So he has more proprietary data from all of these companies than I think any other CEO. Musk also holds that view, telling the New York Times last year that data is probably more valuable than gold. Wood did not respond to a request for comment regarding what benefits Musk's trove of data would have in his role running the Department of Government Efficiency. But Wood is correct that Musk's companies, which span a wide gamut of the tech industry, possess vast amounts of data. SpaceX's subsidiary Starlink operates satellites that provide internet access across the world. His car company Tesla collects data on roadways and driver behaviour through its self-driving features. And X contains a repository of consumer data from its hundreds of millions of users. X might be the single best source of data, Musk told The Times. Wood has been a long-time backer of Musk and his companies. Various ETFs at her $6 billion ARK Invest Fund hold significant number of shares in Musk companies SpaceX and Tesla. Like many Musk supporters, she pointed to his track record of overcoming incredible odds in his business career, which includes founding and being pushed out of PayPal in 2000, and then revolutionising space travel and electric vehicles with SpaceX and Tesla. We've faced this question about Elim for many years, as he started one company after another, Wood said. Former Republican primary candidate Vivek Ramaswamy will be co-director of the group alongside Musk. Wood said Ramaswamy's background as biotech investor would help him effectively cut costs from a healthcare point of view. They will use technology and other sensible measures to really rein in government spending, Wood said of Musk and Ramaswamy, so I think it's a good thing. The specifics of how the commission would work are still unclear. For starters, it would not be a genuine government agency operating within the federal government. It would be an external group, similar to a consulting or accounting firm. Musk has said he aims to cut $2 trillion from the roughly $6.8 trillion federal budget. Some cost cuts would likely require legislation. However, others could be offered as recommendations to government agencies that would adopt the cost-cutting measures. Both cases would likely result in a political fight. Here's the truth. The only governing force that can stop or temper that is going to be the bravest Republicans in the House or in the Senate. Sen, John Fetterman, DPA, told NBC News. It's not going to be us, because we won't have the votes. We don't have the votes. We're in the minority. Bill Gates once famously said, people tend to overestimate the amount of change that can occur in one year, but underestimate the amount of change that can occur over 10 years. It's a cliche, known as Gates' Law, that ARK Invest and its CEO, Kathy Wood, need to be true if their lofty price target for Tesla is to become reality.